how they did. I'm joined by Frank Sippola, an image consultant and author. Uh, Frank, thanks for being here. Would you say that, uh, that there were any clear victors? Yeah, I would say uh, I think Trump secured his position as the front runner. Uh, I thought Carly Fiorina did a terrific job. And I think Chris Christie actually made some noise. He tried to out-Trump Trump as that uh, Northeast uh, rowdy guy, and, mm. and he had some good jabs in there as well. Conversely, uh, Josh, I thought that there were some clunkers there as well. I was disappointed in, in Ben Carson, quite frankly. He's doing something with his body language, which is 95% of human communication. He's doing something with his body language that if I were uh, media coaching him, I'd tell him to stop. I'm sure he's an intelligent guy and an honest guy, but what he often does is he closes his eyes when mm. he tries to make a statement, sometimes for two or three seconds, which says one of two things to the viewer. It says either I'm lying, which I'm not insinuating he is, or I'm really not believing what I'm telling you. So that is what is conveying with his body language when he closes his eyes. Number two, he shuffles a little bit and looks down often, as opposed to Donald Trump, who, as you notice, his arms are, are, are cemented to the podium. His head is straight up, his, his jaw is straight, and sometimes he's actually looking down at his fellow uh, opponents. So there's a juxtaposition there that you can see very profoundly in that, in that debate. Yeah, and Trump's been quite overt about that with Carson as well. I mean, he's been quoted as saying, can you imagine this guy coming into a room with Putin and being taken seriously, right? He just doesn't have the demeanor, he doesn't have the credibility, he doesn't have that air of authority that you require from the commander-in-chief. True, and I think a lot of the candidates you know, they, they churned a little bit and, and they left off where they started. But I think in this day and age, people are busy. They have two jobs, sometimes three jobs. They're taking their kids to soccer practice. They want somebody to state the problem and they want somebody to state the answer in a bumper sticker. The economy's messed up, I'm going to fix it. That's all they need to know. The nuances we'll figure out later. And with Donald Trump, it's not a corporation, the government. He doesn't just go in and tell everybody what to do. He has to work with Congress. He has to put together coalitions. He has to get everybody to agree at some point and pass a bill if he can. So, you know, for now at least, it's playing to the folks who are sick of government. And he's saying, here's the problem. I'll fix it. Trust me. Well, you're right that if nuance is a problem, that is a problem that Donald Trump doesn't have, fortunately. <laughs> uh, Marco Rubio is another person who I want to look at because he also has this kind of diminutive demeanor, right? He, but he's also young and kind of an, yes. an upbeat. He's optimistic. What's not, to, what's not to like, really? He's sort of sunny. I just want to take a look at a clip. This is his attempt to, to be the jokester, which didn't quite go as planned. I'm honored to be here at the Reagan Library at a place that honors the legacy of a man who inspired not just my interest in public service, but also our love for country. And I'm also aware of that California has a drought, and so that's why I made sure I brought my own water. <laughs> so that's obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's obviously a callback yeah. to his disastrous response to the uh, You know, it's funny State he should Union. bring that up, because I, I noticed in him it's almost as if he's a little out of his in that you could see that he's, he's sweating a little more than the rest of the candidates and he's, he's licking his lips which means he's a bit nervous inside so I think he's happy to be there I think he's happy to be considered as a front runner or at least uh, at the big boys table but I think he's not yet comfortable in his skin to pull this off. He might be a force for eight years from now, who knows, but I don't know if he pulls it off this year. Yeah, he's, I mean, it seems like he always has mild stage fright. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, when Jake Tapper asked Trump what he'd do if given the nuclear codes, he responded by insulting Rand Paul. Look at this. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11, he's got 1% in the polls, and how he got up here, there's far too many people anyway. Senator Paul, your name has been invoked. I kind of have to laugh when I think, of, hmm, sounds like a non sequitur. He was asked whether or not he would be capable and it would be in good hands to be in charge of the nuclear weapons, and all of a sudden there's a sideways attack at me. I think that really goes to really the judgment. Do we want someone with that kind of character, that kind of careless language, to be negotiating with Putin? Do we want someone like that to be negotiating with Iran? I think really there's a sophomore quality that is entertaining about Mr. Trump. But I am worried. I'm very concerned about him having him in charge of the nuclear weapons because I think his response, his, his visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly, my goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? And Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Jake, Jake, the 
So Trump's, Trump's sort of looseness and bluster is, yeah. uh, is a double-edged sword, isn't it? it? On the one hand, it appeals to people because it seems so unpolished and so yeah. authentic. On the other hand, it does risk coming across the way, that, um, the way that Rand Paul is describing it. And I think that's what Rand Paul was doing, but it's a wonderful juxtaposition. I think it says a lot about our country that even though Rand Paul is really making some very good points, that we're still being entertained, in quotes, by Donald Trump. And I think people want to get to the point and they don't want candidates who go on and on and on and on. Rand Paul, wonderful jab. Donald Trump, still, still the king. In fact, during the debate, you saw him slap high five with uh, Jeb Bush and he tapped Ben Carson on the back. That was a good joke. Hey, okay, you did a great job. He's sort of like the everyday guy, the regular guy. And, I, and that's where I think his appeal is. And he's able to pull that off, Josh. He's able to pull that off because he can. People understand that this is who he is. And, and yet, they accept him. If any regular guy was as bombastic and megalomaniacal and egomaniacal yeah. as he is, I mean, you'd kick him out of any barbecue you had him at, wouldn't you? There's something about his grandiosity that, is, that sort of looms large on TV. But in real life, I mean, you wouldn't cop that from a neighbor. Of course, but we've known Trump now for what? 30 years, starting yeah. off as a real estate mogul here in New York City and becoming an entertainer on television with The Apprentice and so on and so forth. So, you know, that's his brand. Now, conversely, Jeb Bush did something with his body language uh, yesterday that uh, you could see uh, he's still a little uncomfortable. He's still a bit stiff and flat. But, and this is very subtle, you'll see he'll move his neck to the left and to the right and to the left. And that's an almost in body language saying to my opponents, don't hurt me. I'm exposing my neck to you, but I'm doing that because I'm a kind person. Just don't hurt me. I want to take a look at that. Let's, uh, let's, let's go to the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Jeb Bush clip, because I really don't think that he did particularly well. He doesn't seem to no. be comfortable in doing what he needs to do, which is to assert himself against the, the, the runaway train that yes. is Donald Trump. So he was challenged about his brother, the former President George W. Bush, and here's what he said. Your brother and your brother's administration gave us Barack Obama because it was such a disaster those last three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. You know what? As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. I don't know if you remember <laughs> Donald. You remember the, the rubble? You remember the firefighter with his arms around it? He sent a clear signal that the United States would be strong and fight Islamic terrorism, and he did keep us safe. I don't know. You feel safe right now? I don't feel so safe. What do you, you make see, of that? I give Donald Trump credit because I know in his mind what he wanted to say was, if I might get political for just a moment, that, yeah, he kept us safe except on 9-11. But, you know, that would, that would welcome the wrath or, or bring on the wrath of the Republican Party. So he held his, his tongue. And I know he probably wanted to say something like that. It probably was. You reckon right. Trump ever holds his tongue? <laughs> well, in this particular case. I feel case, like if he'd said that, I mean, to, to, to claim that we were unsafe for eight months and then safe for eight years mm. is still a pretty good record, right? I mean, in, as, as far as, you know, he, he, if, whether or not he dropped the ball on 9-11. Right. Uh, you, could, you could argue one way or another, but the fact that there was no major attack on U.S. soil and hasn't been one since says something, right, about competence. It, it does. Uh, you know, more than anything, though, I'm surprised that Donald Trump is still where he is. I, I said in earlier interviews during the summer that he was the Republican summer fling. But here we are, a, a few days from the fall, the autumn, and he's still in a position where he is uh, at the top. And I think some people will challenge him. I, again, I think Carly Fiorina did well. I think Chris Christie uh, did well as well. And, and, and I think there's some other candidates, but I think you'll see a thinning as we go on. But as long as Donald Trump continues, Josh, what I call the rooster syndrome, he knows he's the biggest rooster in, in, in the barnyard, and he's walking around strutting his stuff and dismissing people like he did with Rand Paul. You mentioned Chris Christie. I want to take a look at a clip of Chris, Chris Christie. This is him trying to sort of invoke his inner Trump, right, as you, as you said. Uh, and he was, he, it was Carly Fiorina and Donald Trump fighting over who has the best qualifications. And sure. Chris Christie just tried to shoot them both down. Take a look at this. The fact is that we don't want to hear about your careers back and forth and volleying back and forth about who did well and who did poorly. You're both successful people. Congratulations. You know who's not successful? The middle class in this country who's getting plowed over by Obama and Hillary Clinton. Let's start talking about the O's issues tonight and stop this childish back and forth between the two of you. Okay. Did that work? Yeah, I think it did. What he did was he became much stronger than the last debate, number one. Number two, I submit to you if Donald Trump wasn't in the race, Josh, that Chris Christie would be that Donald Trump.
hmm. that bombastic personality who's going to tell it like it is. The worst thing for Chris Christie was Donald Trump getting into the race. Otherwise, worst Chris thing Christie, for everyone in the, in the exactly. pack. Exactly. Chris Christie. It was, now, what does uh, he have? One percent or two percent? Chris yeah. Christie, Governor yeah. Chris Christie, and Trump has twenty-three or thirty in some polls and so on. But you know, I think I think you can't out Trump Trump. He's been around a lot longer. He's more well known nationally. And he's just got that space locked up. Chris Christie might have grabbed a little bit of it last night, but certainly not all. Yeah, I mean, if you were Chris Christie's people, you would, you would be hoping, I suppose, that Trump implodes and you become the more intelligent, more experienced version of Donald Chris, Trump, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I just want to take a look lastly at Christy Fier uh, Carly Fiorina. Mm -hmm. She stood out in last night's debate. She was well prepared. She stood her ground. Um, her best moment may have been when she stood up to Trump. Just take a look at this. In an interview last week in Rolling Stone magazine, Donald Trump said the following about you, quote, look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? Mr. Trump later said he was talking about your persona, not your appearance. Please feel free to respond what you think about his persona. <laughs> You know, it's interesting to me, Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. You know what's interesting about that? Uh, first of all, Carly, as I mentioned, did a great job. It, it, you know, when I talent coach, especially politicians, uh, colors say a lot as well. If you notice, everyone on that stage either had one or two colors in their outfit, either red or blue sometimes light blue. Light blue conveys trust. In Carly Fiorina's case, that blue dress conveyed trust. It's a warm color. Red conveys power. And a lot of the candidates had red on. Donald Trump had some sort of striped blue tie, which sort of surprised me. Maybe he wanted to show that he wasn't the rooster. I don't even think he around. thinks about it. I don't even yeah. think he has image consultants. He's the only <laughs> one up there who just dressed himself. He's like, I like this tie. I'm going to wear this tie. He probably did. It's but you know, if, if, you look at, if you look at any candidate or any politician who has to lay on some bad news or, or convey trust, it's always that light blue. And mm. you saw it all over the place last night. Interesting. Great to talk to you, Frank. Thanks Wonderful so much for to be here, in. Josh. Thank you for having me. You got it.